Welcome to your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast with Deanna Hobbs, founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, broadcasting live from our headquarters studios in Buffalo, New York. Visit us online at empoweringeverydaywomen.org. Today's inspiration is to inform you that God is preparing you for bigger Greater things are ahead for you, but in order to possess all God has for you, it requires you to step outside your comfort zone and walk by faith and not by sight. If you're willing to do this, God can do great and mighty things on your behalf. Welcome to this, your Tuesday, March 8th, 2022 edition of your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast, I am your host, Deanna Hobbs, your bestie from Buffalo. Y'all, I love it when you call me bestie. It just feels right, doesn't it? You know what else I love? That this is day seven in a row that we are up in this podcast studio. What? In scripture, You know, the number seven is the number of completion. So for me, it just feels like confirmation, excuse me, that God is going to complete the work he started in New Deanna. As rough around the edges as evangelist New Deanna might be, I feel God's favor with me and his grace on me. Yesterday, though, y'all, I got aggravated again, just... My emotions were all over the place Monday afternoon. Sometimes I I get these um, mood swings and I don't really know why. It's part of the reason that I take Prozac because for somebody with brain trauma like me, part of the brain that controls my emotions and my behavior is messed up. So I can be happy and then sad. I can get upset and then, you know, get over it relatively quick. I'll feel pouty and agitated. And yesterday I was having trouble concentrating. I think that's what really bothered me because it's stuff I be wanting to do and then I can't focus. And it makes me so mad when that happens, Bestie, because um, I used to be able to do a lot of stuff and now I I can't do as much. So when good stuff is happening in my life, <clears throat> See, the devil done showed up. Old Slewfoot trying to take my voice. Ugly self. Leave me alone. Okay, I'm drinking water. <laughs> I'm aggravated. I done started with the ugly self today. <laughs> Pray the spirit of aggravation off of me. Ugh. So it's like I'll start making progress, right? And then I want to do all the things. I just want to push myself. But Then my brain will let me know, girl, sit down. We is not doing all that today. And I was mad yesterday. My brain was like, okay, stay mad. But that's not what we doing. And and Jen, my therapist, she always be like, Deanna, you got to honor your capacity right now that, you know, over time it'll increase and stuff. But it is what it is right now. And y'all, that's that's still something that's hard for me to wrap my mind around. So just pray for me. When you think of me, pray for Bestie. Because I just be wanting to do everything all the time. But I try not to turn those frustrating moments into like a whole day. If I can help it. Because one of my... (coughs) (coughs) Is we really doing this today? Now, I ain't coughed one time. Till I start talking to you, (laughs) a mess. But one of my sisters, her name is LaQuinte. I call her Quinny Penny, um, but I also call her Coach Q. She's a life coach, a really good one too. She'd be helping me sometimes. So when I get really riled up and I'll be crying and stuff, she can always calm me down. I don't know. She just know what to say. So she'll call me in my overly dramatic moment, she'll call that being on tour. So she, bestie, I'll be so worked up and it feels like like the whole world is caving in and I'll call Quinte. 
crying and carrying on and trying to explain what got me in that position. And and she'll listen. She's a really good listener. And then she'll be like, okay, okay, you done? You done? Are we on tour again? Are you on stage right now, sis? (laughs) She will diss me to my face. She she be like, you got the spotlight on you, just putting on a show. You got your Michael Jackson glove on, and you doing the most. You doing the most. Why why are we on tour? The first time she said that that I was on tour, I cracked up. She was like, no, ma'am, the tour is canceled. Get off the stage and go sit down in the audience and go put that Michael Jackson glove away. And so you know what? Speaking of Michael Jackson, when I was growing up, my daddy. He ain't let us listen to Michael Jackson, bro. And he said that was the devil's music. And I, I feel like that was child abuse, low key, because we should have been listening to the King of Pop. But man, I still I still don't know most of Michael Jackson's songs. Like only the chorus to the to the really popular ones like Beat It or Thriller or Billy Jean is like that stuff. I did, though. I did used to sneak. And watch his video, though, from the way you make me feel. Man, I used to love that video. I knew if my daddy caught me watching it, I was going to get whooping. But I liked it. Why? Why am I talking about Michael Jackson? Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yesterday I felt like going on tour and I almost slipped on my Michael Jackson glove, y'all, and started moonwalking into depression and anxiety. But I ain't do it. I canceled the tour instead. So anybody who purchased tickets to my Michael Jackson tour, you can get a refund. (laughs) But I went ahead and I took a nap, a much needed nap, like an irritable, agitated baby. Because I I be battling in my mind and it's for irrational reasons. Like with brain trauma, it doesn't have to be a trigger that I even understand or or something that makes sense. I just might feel overwhelmed for a reason I don't know. And your kindness really, really makes a difference. It's it's amazing. So thank you too for how you tuning in to the podcast daily, especially with new Deanna, because it's such a departure from old Deanna. And you just be hanging with your bestie from Buffalo. And I love you for it. And of course, this podcast is available for you whenever you get to listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube.com forward slash Deanna Hobbs. Remember, that's D-I-A-N-N-A-H-O-B-B-S, your daily cup of inspiration dot com. And just anywhere podcasts are heard, you can find your daily cup. And um, besties, I... I um I was thinking about two things. One, okay, it left my mind. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> anyway, I got this testimony. Let's just move on, okay? Because it's just apparently that kind of day. I got this testimony and it touched my heart. I featured it in the ministry newsletter yesterday. If you subscribe to my newsletter, thank you. Um, But I want to make sure you hear it. It is a testimony from Tessa, and she lives in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I got family in Winston-Salem, Tessa. Um, But she said, I got in a car accident um, two years ago and got a severe head injury. Mm. After that, I changed a lot. My abilities were different and the way I approached life changed. I lost a lot of friends who couldn't handle the new me. I feel like your ministry of being new, Deanna, is healing the root of rejection in my life and making it finally okay for me to walk in the truth of who I am today. Thank you for the freedom to embrace who God has allowed me to become for his own special purposes. I love you, woman of God. Mm, Hallelujah. Okay, so this makes me want to cry. Y'all know I'm a crybaby. I'm a big waterhead because Tessa, I know it ain't easy, sis. Brain trauma, head injuries, they can change you so much, but... When I was reading that testimony, it made me think that if if I can make one person feel less alone, 
and know that God is still able to use them, then it is all worth it. I'm so emotional over this. Whew, can we get a praise break right here for Tessa? And inspiring testimonies like this remind us that God is transforming lives through this ministry. We are grateful for your support that keeps these broadcasts available online as a free resource to help others grow in their faith. If you are being blessed and you believe in our mission to share the gospel, sow a seed of any size at empoweringeverydaywomen.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. All right. Thank you, Jesus. My soul, man, is so grateful for how God is just using the podcast, the ministry, the new Deanna. He's so good. Um, Let's pray right quick, besties, before we get into the meat of today's broadcast. Okay. Um, God, thank you for showing us that you're sovereign and, and you're just in control and that you even orchestrated it that this person would come here and press play without you, God. I don't have anything to offer, but I know that when you word my mouth, you will give me exactly what they need to hear to minister to their soul. So please use me today for your glory. I say yes to your will in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Whew. Test the testimony, bless me. All right. So I was best. I was um looking for something in my storage room in the attic, and I came across this bunch of DVDs that was some old DVDs. It was a bunch of stuff in there. It was like some old gospel CDs, and the DVDs were from my days of hosting TCT, and that stands for um total christian television the first time i went on tct it was this show called celebrate i was a guest and i was being interviewed and after the interview and everything it went well glory to god and 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 then they asked me if i would come back and host the program and i was like wait a host wait (laughs) what because that's like a big leap to go from you know, just sitting on the couch and somebody asking you some questions to you just like running a show, hosting it. And and God knew, though, when I showed up as a guest that he was preparing me for a bigger role. I, I just didn't know that. You know how sometimes you can look back and see, oh, God was setting me up and I didn't even know it. You can't see it while you're in that process, but you can look back on it and see it. But something bigger is is coming down the road for you. I, I, I think, guy, as you listening to this podcast for a reason, it is. You just just keep going and watch. Um, but when they asked me about it, I was thinking, nah, y- y'all made a mistake because I, I don't do television hosting. So at the time, I think I was a radio DJ at a local station and hosting my own afternoon show. I think, I hope I'm not getting these timelines mixed up because stuff gets mixed up in my brain. Like I'll have flashes of memories and stuff, try to put them together and it can be hazy. But one thing I do remember is when I got to TCT Studios in Orchard Park, New York to host, the set was really beautiful. The people were nice, but I was shocked to learn that Y'all, they ain't had no teleprompter. Like, I wasn't going to be able to read from nothing. They, from nothing. They didn't use teleprompters, bestie. So I was just going to have to wing it. And I was thinking, no, no way in the world. Because I thought a, t- a TV station with this set, y'all got to have a teleprompter. So the words can roll up and I can just read. And and so they were like, nah, sis, that's we don't do it like that. So I went back in the green room and I met the guest that I was going to interview on the show. And we talked and 
I read over the pre-show questionnaires that my guests, they had to fill them out beforehand with their name and the name of their ministry, their book, the event, or whatever we were going to be talking about that day. And so I would get as much details as I could about who they were, their story, you know, all the information I needed. And after our initial meeting period, then we walked out the green room <clears throat> and onto the official set, got mic'd up, and then the mic check and stuff. And, and then it was just time to get rolling. Bruh, I remember the first time I went to host, I had this necklace on. I thought I was cute. I think it was beads or like multiple strings of pearls or something. And the producer was like, no, ma'am, you got to take that, that, that necklace off because it was interfering with the mic. And the mic kept picking up these clacking sounds in my necklace. So I had to take it off. I was I was really learning on the fly. So they had to tell me, you know, if you're going to host, you have to try and make sure you don't you don't wear noisy earrings or jewelry and stuff like that. So I didn't know what to do and what not to do. I was just kind of getting that as I went along. Didn't know what I was doing, but I think the difference between me then and me now, aside from brain trauma, of course, is that. I didn't dwell on, on what I didn't know for too, too long. That don't mean I ain't think about it because I did. Like, what if I get on TV in front of millions of people in the U.S. and Canada and like jack this up? I, I thought about it, but still, I, I guess I, I didn't freak out over it. Makes sense? Because old Deanna was more like, OK, God, you put me in these shoes they seem bigger than what I can fit. But I mean, you know, what's the right size for me. I, so I just had to lean on the Lord or bust, you know, because somehow, some way things worked out. It went smoothly. It, it was the craziest thing ever. But I know that God gave me the grace for that assignment. I know he did. It, I think we have like these romantic ideas, like these fairy tale images of what it will look like when we get there, you know, quote unquote, there in our lives. And like what it'll be like when we sit at the big table or in the important chair. But one of the things I feel like God wants me to do is to prepare his people for bigger and to let them know that it's OK. God can take you where he's going to take you with what you have right now. Um, you might feel unpolished and all that, but God can take you where he wants to take you. And so I've had situations where there are people who be critiquing what you're doing and saying and having these side conferences. They be whispering like, what? I don't know. And you be wondering, what is they saying? They be talking about whether your outfit is appropriate, where you should sit. But you know what? You can't get caught up in that. You just got to show up. And do what God put you in position to do. Because I remember when I was like younger, my family didn't have a lot of money. And I had these yellow sneakers. I remember these yellow sneakers. They was called Sprints. I think I might have got them from like Payless or something. Or Pickway. I don't even know what them, if Pickway still exists. That was here in Buffalo. It was just this cheap shoe store. And we couldn't afford name brand sneakers. And... I had those yellow sneakers and I remember how hard people laughed at me in school because they called them buddies. Um, so if your sneakers was no name, they call them buddies. It was like buddies. They make your feet feel funny. Cost a dollar ninety nine. Why did that survive brain trauma? <laughs> that was really mean spirited. Uh, and so people used to make fun of me or like one time my cousin he had these jeans and they were some nice jeans and um, he couldn't fit them. So he let me have them. And I think my mother like hem hemmed them up or something at the bottom, but they were bell bottoms. And I think that's before bell bottoms was popular. And so when I went to school and the kids started singing rock the bells and laughing at me and my jeans and I went and hid in the bathroom stall, I was so embarrassed. People was mean to me. And so I got bullied a lot in school because we didn't have money. And I think a lot of times people in life will make you feel like you ain't worthy and like you can't show up like you are. And that's not true. 
do not get caught up in that show up and do what God put you in position to do wear what you got to wear um say it how God gave you to say it God put you there not necessarily because you're qualified but because you are called oh that'll preach not just because you're qualified because sometimes you ain't <laughs> You ever have God open a door for you that you ain't qualified for? He opened that door. And so he qualifies the called. The calling comes first. That comes first, right? The equipping comes second. And the qualifications get built up over time. You just got to keep doing it, right? God ain't in that elitism. He not. What God has for you is for you. Educated, uneducated is for you articulate inarticulate is for you well connected or um completely anonymous is for you mentally ill or mentally stable is for you confident or quaking in your boots is for you the favorite choice or the least favorite choice is for you well liked or disliked is for you If God chose you, that's enough. His approval is the only approval you need. I was reading um, Galatians 1 and 10, and I really like it in the New International Version. And it says, um, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Like I had to go and minister this one time at this women's weekend, Bestie. And y'all know I grew up Pentecostal. So I like to shout and hoop and holler and talk loud. And I like to be like, say, yeah, yeah, I, let me preach. Give me the, give me an organ and let me preach. Right. So it's just the way I was raised. And so I was ministering at this luncheon. And after it was over, God turned that beautiful room with them fancy tables and all that cuisine into a sanctuary. Man, people was in there shouting and crying and running. I loved it too. It's straight mayhem. I love to cut up for Jesus. I was like, yeah, like get it, get it, sis. Praise him in the dance right up in this banquet hall. So it it just, it makes me think about David who was a, he was a straight up praiser. And in 2 Samuel um, 6 and 22, y'all remember after he had shouted out his clothes and humiliated his wife, who didn't think he was acting enough like a king. I always love what David said. He said, I will become even more undignified than this. Tell her, David, period. David was like, you're not finna box me in, shouty, and make me uh, act like you think I should act. You don't like this, child? This is mild compared to what I will do. (laughs) I love what David said. That praise David said not one for her anyway. It was for the Lord. It wasn't for people around him. It was for God. And when you do what you do for the praise of God and not man, man, you ain't got time to worry about who ain't feeling you. That's that's keeping it a buck because people always got opinions, right? They do. But this distinguished looking older lady at this women's weekend Y'all, she came up to me after the luncheon and she was like, you are so beautiful and educated. It started off nice. And I just was watching you up there. And then it took a turn, y'all, after she gave me all these compliments. Anybody ever give you a compliment so they could dog you after? (laughs) Like, you could have just cut to that and tell me you think my shoes ugly. Like, you ain't have to do that. Like, oh, that suit is amazing. Uh, your hair is lovely but you know you could have put on a different pair of shoes no nah, just keep it a hundred keep it a buck just come and say i don't like your shoes sis <laughs> so she did all that told me i was beautiful and educated and then she was like but <clears throat> you don't have to do all that screaming and carrying on some people need to do that but not you that's just not becoming besties besties now my mama and daddy taught me to respect my elders so 
I, I just let her go on and talk. I let her talk. I smile. And when she was finished, I kept smiling and I thanked her. I sure did. I said, thank you. Uh, keep me in your prayers. Keep me lifted. That's what you tell people when they when they say some nonsense to you. You know what? Keep me lifted. Pray for me. <laughs> and I kept it pushing because I was not going to be up in there arguing with this woman. Right. I wasn't going to do it. But my presentation was not about to change to make her feel better about who God called me to be. Like, listen, I. I can't be trying to please people and God, especially New Deanna. Cause New Deanna, look, she, she'd be doing the best she can out here. But I have to please God. That's why I think Galatians 1 and 10 is so good. You know, are you trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Because if God is going to do bigger things in your life, you, you're going to have more voices, more, more opinions, right? More critics, and sometimes those internal voices in you will get louder. But besties, whenever you start doing what God calls you to do, you just got to know everybody won't understand how you do it or why. And that's got to be OK, because we're all so different. And some of us come from Pentecostal backgrounds where we was loud in church. I, and like I told you, I'm still like that. And then other people went to quiet churches where they ain't do all that shouting and dancing and running and speaking in tongues and crying and sweating their edges out. And, and you know what? They're not comfortable with doing that. They think it's undignified and ghetto. <laughs> well, I'm going to be ghetto for Jesus, boo-boo, period. So however you get your praise on or, or however you show up in the world, it, it really depends on you and your background and, and your personal convictions, how God's leading you. And I just think that we are not here to judge. Man, when I grew up in my daddy's storefront church, we used to praise the Lord in the dance for hours. I would sweat my little hair out and everything. And that praise break you get every day on this podcast that, I, that you hear is a true taste of the sounds I would hear ringing out in the atmosphere when it came time to give the Lord a shout, I will praise God anywhere because he's been good to me because he is faithful, because he's worthy. See, I feel like praising him right now because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, anybody else mm, and all he's done for me, I, I don't know how to be dignified. The devil straight up came for my neck. He came for my life. And you want me to be dignified like and I think about how new Deanna, she ain't as polished as old Deanna was. But old Deanna ain't had brain trauma. O -o old Deanna ain't had no mini stroke and almost 30 seizures, right? Old Deanna, sh she ain't go through what new Deanna went through. And so the way that God brought me out, even if I come out unpolished and undignified, I ain't going to let nothing and nobody steal my praise. I will pick them up and put them down in a minute, still to this day. But at Daddy's Church, man, we, did I say man? <laughs> Where did I pick that up from? At Daddy's Church, man, we would be in there hooping and hollering and screaming and crying and falling out. Shoot, that's what church looked like for me. But not everybody, right? And that's okay. People are different, but... Leave people alone. Let them praise God how they want to praise God. I have encountered some people who have an idea of how things should be done and, and they will say as much. Well, say on. But but after you say on, I'm going to move on and I'm going to keep doing what God called me to do the way he called me to do it. Because if I am believing God to do bigger and better things in my life, like I can't abandon what he's called me to do and, and how he's called me to do it because somebody don't prefer it or like it or understand it. This ain't America's next top model auditioning for Tyre Banks and looking for approval. You ain't finna be yelling at me like that meme. You remember she was like, I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? Nah, fam, it ain't that kind of show, okay? Because um, I'm not auditioning for you. <laughs> God wants us. He wants you. 
to to show up as he created you and do his will because we want to live in alignment with God's will and follow his biblical principles. But God ain't calling us to be perfect and, and trying to put on some representation of what we think we ought to be. God will put you in rooms that you ain't supposed to be in. He'll open the doors that you people say you ain't supposed to walk through. He will connect you to the people that folks say you ain't qualified to link with. He'll give you the breakthroughs and the miracles that will propel you forward in your life to places that elitists say "Mm, people like her or people like him don't get there. What? God will do bigger and better things for you. He will cause blessings to chase you down and overwhelm you. God will do it. This one time, besties, producers from NBC called me out the blue for something they was working on that they were considering me for. I didn't even know how they got my information and they wanted me to be a part of it. So they just start asking me all these questions like, what do you think about this? Or how would you handle that? And what if I said this? What would you say? And I felt like I was being grilled and interrogated. I was uncomfortable, honestly. I was like, who is y'all, the feds? How you even get my information? Like, man, I know. But I didn't know what the right answer was. And, and all I could do was be myself, you know? It was for some opportunity I didn't even ask for and seek out. So I wasn't about to be pretending like I was something that I wasn't. And so after the one conversation was over, I thought I was done. I was thought I was done. But nah, they had like rounds of conversations. They were like, no, we gonna call you back and have so-and-so on the call this time. And the names and the titles start getting bigger. And they just kept kept adding more people to the call until they finally were satisfied that I was a good fit and I went on to participate. But behind the scenes, man, they were grilling me. And I learned that on these major TV networks, They try to make sure they have the right mix of personalities on these shows and panels and programs. So they have something specific they looking for and they like to plug people in those spots. And sometimes whether you get on or not has nothing to do with like your level of of talent, intelligence or ability. It's like what they looking for. So either you what they looking for or you not don't even take that personal. So. They'll try and get to know you by asking you a bunch of questions and sometimes the same questions, but they ask you in like 50 different ways so they can get the truth. But it just was intense and nobody prepared me for that. Wait, no, wait, let let me let me rephrase that. God, God prepared me for that. Yes, I just didn't feel prepared. Yeah, that's better. God prepared me. Uh, bestie for this phase of my life too even though I don't feel prepared to show up as new Deanna because she'd be doing a lot but look here God just like he prepared me he's preparing you for stuff that you don't feel prepared for right now he's gonna do better things for you bigger things for you and listen we all have got those moments when God calls us to do stuff that we feel like we don't know how to do it and we'll hit bumps in the road. We run into issues personally, privately, professionally, sometimes publicly like new Deanna, right? And everybody can see it, but somehow God helps us get through it because it's what we're called to. Like, you know, I keep it all the way a hundred. I don't know how to do this, this showing up as new Deanna and just being me, with my scattered brain and encouraging you. I don't know what I'm doing. This is real fresh. I don't know exactly how to be a mental health advocate. It, it was only since 2019 that I had mental health issues like this, right? And just this morning, before I came into the studio, I was praying. I said, God, I say yes to your will, but I, I don't know how to do your will like this. This, God, don't even feel like me. This feel like somebody hijacked my life and and took over all my stuff without asking me. Stuff that I would never have said or done before is what this version of me is doing. But you know what, bestie? God spoke back to me 
Oh, ugly devil. Stop trying to take my voice. He don't want me to tell you this. Let me drink some water. Getting on my nerves. Ugh. Okay. <clears throat> so God spoke back to me and said, I took over your life. <laughs> so I was like, who hijacked my life? Or it's like, what? I, I, I control your life. And then he said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Mm. That's Jeremiah 1 and 5. He said, before you took shape in your mother's womb, I wrote this down. I'm, I'm reading you my business because you're my bestie. Before you took shape in your mother's womb, I anointed and appointed you. God said, I ordained even this season. And even though it doesn't look like or feel like it or seem like it. See, I'm emotional now. <clears throat> This path is leading you to something better, to something bigger. Phew. I feel like I need a break. Like, can we cut? <laughs> oh, Lord, that thing got me this morning. Um, and that word he gave me is for you, too, bestie. I, I know you don't always understand what God is doing, how he's doing it or why or like, why you go through some of the stuff that you go through or how things are going to work out or where you even go from here. You don't need brain trauma to have those questions. Life stuff will make you ask that. But just know that because God is the one that's with you and allowing you to go on this path, it's going to work out for your good. Like I was reading about the disciples in Luke 9 and 1 through 6 and Jesus had called his 12 disciples together, right? And he told them, I get, I'm giving you power and authority over demons and over diseases. Then he told them, I want you to go out and preach the gospel and heal people. That sounded cool. Like, man, their ministry was going to be lit. They was anointed, man. They got to walk in authority. But then Jesus told them, take nothing for your journey. Okay, wait, what? What you mean? Nothing, Jesus. Yeah, he said, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, not even an extra coat. And wherever anybody will let you in while you're in a certain place doing my work, that's where I want you to stay the whole time and then leave from there. And Jesus said, and if somebody won't welcome you or receive you, cool. In verse five, he told him, then just shake the dust off your feet and keep it pushing. Now, Having the authority and the supernatural power to do bigger and better things for the kingdom. Shoot, that sounded dope. I'm like, sign me up. Amazing. But what wasn't amazing and sounded a little scarier, what, at least for me, was the idea that they could take nothing with them. And they had to just rely on God's favor, working through the kindness of strangers to get the work done. So on the one hand, they were super powerful. And anointing, on the other hand, it was all these variables they can't control. And guess what? That's life. You anoint it, super anoint it. But there's all these variables that you can't control. But you got to know if God sent me, I'm going to be okay. Scripture said the disciples went too. They went through the villages, sharing the gospel, curing diseases, operating in the power of God. This was a new way of doing things for them. It must have felt like somebody has snatched their security blanket from them because they didn't really know where they were going, even though they knew why they were going and who sent them. Ah, oh, that's good. Sometimes you're going to feel like, I don't know where I'm going, but you got to know why you keep going and you got to know who sent you. And you know what, bestie? The disciples had everything they needed because they were walking in the divine power and authority of God and they had been sent by the Lord. And when they went, as uncomfortable as it was, they saw bigger, more spectacular and miraculous displays of the power of God. But hey, they had to do something in a way they had never done it before that made them uncomfortable so God could do something bigger through them. You know, the bigger... God blesses you, the more uncomfortable you're going to be. I'm uncomfortable, but thank God for the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter. He is our guide. He is our teacher. He equips us to do his will. I feel his presence today. I just know he sent me for you to tell you that bigger and better things are coming for you. He's preparing you for bigger. 
He didn't promise that it was going to all make sense all the time. I know he ain't promised me that because God can't lie. And so if he had promised me that, then this wouldn't line up. But he did promise that he would equip you, that he'd favor you, that he would bless you, that he'd take care of you. He's doing all that stuff for me. And God gave me two specific, specific, no, specific. (laughs) I want to say specific. Ah, There we go. God gave me two specific scriptures in my new, in my devotion time this morning. And I want to put both of them in your cup of inspiration, if that's okay. So the first one is in Isaiah 43 and 18 and the first half of verse 19. And it says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And then Philippians 3 and 13 is the other one God gave me. And it says, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own. But one thing I do Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. So as you drink down this contents, uh, these contents of your cup today, I just know that God is saying he's doing something new in you. But you got to forget the past because something bigger lies ahead. Forget your comfort zone as uncomfortable as you may be. Oh, this message is for me, too. Oh, it's for me, too. God is saying you might be uncomfortable, but if you follow me, I will do more and greater for you than you ever imagined I would. Just trust me. All right. Now let's pray. God, I pray right now for my sister. This my brother. They like me. God might be in a real uncomfortable season when you're stretching them and challenging them and calling them out of their comfort zone and I believe that you just sent this word because something bigger and better is on the way and you're preparing them. Please help them not to be afraid, but to embrace this new season as they trust you to faithfully perform your promise to bless them, favor them and prosper them. We thank you for all these things and receive it by faith in Jesus name. Amen. Your daily cup of inspiration has been brought to you by Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where we fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to yourdailycupofinspiration.com.